Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500. Welcome back to another video on what's it called? Bob and Bob and Viv, Rob and Viv. I can't remember. Let me let me double check the number plate. Stand by. Yeah, Rob and Viv. Project Rob and Viv. So, as you saw in the last video, we got the front bumper on, etc., etc., etc. Um, today I've just got to jack it up, take the wheel off, and um, get the uh, get that bolt out um, with that captive nut on the back of the wing. Um, I've got the windscreen fella coming today. I'm not not sure what time he's coming. He said uh, that he is uh, going to come sometime today, and he's going to give me a call when he's on route. Um, so yeah, 135 pounds 20 for the uh, supply and fit windscreen. I paid 140 pounds before, um, but I used to normally have to wait. A few, a good few days. Um, he's doing it like the day after. He, he he could have done it yesterday, but of course I told him I was doing the airbags and dash, so uh, it could wait. And of course I was hoping to get Marilyn back. We got some uh, some news on Marilyn. I won't go through it on this video because this is nothing to do with Marilyn. But um, we'll do uh, when we get Marilyn back. We'll go through the uh, through what uh, my conversation with the body shop today. Um, needless to say, uh, it has been delayed. Uh, not their fault. Um, all will be revealed. Anyway. This one. So when the windscreen fella gets here, I shall ask him if I can set up the camera and put it on time lapse. Him doing it. If he if he doesn't mind that, then we'll do it. Uh, if not, we won't. We'll show you before and after. So uh, yeah. So hopefully, this will be uh, a new, freshly new windscreen within a couple of hours or so. Um, what else are we going to do? So what I've done bumper wise, you know, as you know, this car is pretty much spotless, um, and I'm not happy in trying to bodge repair this bumper so what i've done i had a look again on ebay last night and there are no white bumpers in decent condition for a re reasonable price there's a, there's one or two that are <coughs> that are good but they're pickup only and they're up north somewhere so that's no good to me um way up north so what i've done uh, there was someone selling um they say oem bumpers but i'm sure they're not um, but I have used non-OEM bumpers before and they've actually been completely fine. The only thing about them is that black lip down the bottom, you can't see it properly. That black lip down the bottom, that isn't a rubber lip, that's just part of the bumper. Uh, so that gets painted as well. But who cares about that? Um, <clears throat> if you remember that metallic blue one, the 09 plate that we sold twice, the one we sold and then bought it back and sold a few months ago, that had one of those on. They're fine. They're absolutely fine. Um, and... If I bought two of them, then they were £46 each. Uh, I got 10% off by buying two. So my thinking is, I'll stick one on this, and I'll stick one on Marilyn, because that bumper's not fantastic either. Um, and what I'll do is I'll get them painted. I'll get them, take them to the paint shop. I think, I think he charges me 85 quid to paint a new bumper. So that's like 130 quid, something like that, for a brand new painted to colour bumper which is far, far cheaper than buying one of the eBay ones because they're about £220 painted to code uh, and they take a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully, hopefully, as it's just painting a new bumper, I can take the bumpers down there and he can just paint them and I'll get them back within a week, hopefully. Um, and then we can dress them up with all the, all the trim and what have you. And of course, I bought a bumper, a proper bumper with the, um, the proper holes for the, uh, the trim to go either side, whereas this is a pop bumper, this one. So... Uh, again, the, the reason, the, one of the reasons I'm doing that is because it's very rare that you get a really, really good front bumper. Obviously, they take stone chips over the years, and sometimes, sometimes you get one that you know just needs a bit of, you know, you get little scuffs like that, which will, there might be more of them, but they will easily come off with a bit of G3. Um, but you know, generally they're not in fantastic condition. I can't remember. I think I bought this one. I don't think this came off of a car. Um, you know, at the moment, it's I can if if I don't get them back from the paint shop in time, this is fine. This one to take for an MOT. When the new number plates come, I'll stick those on. Obviously, that bumper thing over there will be done today, so the bumper will go on properly, uh, and I can take it for an MOT. Um, obviously, it'll have the new screen as well. So once we've got an MOT, you know, should it fail anything on the MOT, which I don't think it will, um, it's had pretty much clean MOTs throughout its entire life. Um, then all we need to do is get the bumpers back, put the bumper on, ready to go. Um, so I think that's a plan, that's a good plan. And as most of the cars I do are white anyway, I think what I'm going to do is once I've done that and used those two bumpers, I'm going to buy another two. 
uh, and just getting painted to rip, getting painted white and then stick them in the garage makes makes complete and utter sense to keep brand new painted bumpers in stock so that's the plan so uh, I'd say hopefully uh, you will see this car in a couple of hours well it won't be a couple of hours for you but a couple of hours or so for me you will see this um, car with brand new windscreen so we'll be back very shortly It is nice new windscreen. Lovely, lovely job. So that cost me a hundred and thirty-five pounds twenty pence, but I gave him hundred and thirty-six pounds and said keep change as you would. Um, yeah, nice job, nice job. Pleased with that. Five pounds cheaper than before. <laughs> uh, he'll be doing the other one, uh, Project Marilyn as well, which I was hoping that it would be done at the same time, but um, sadly it wasn't to be. So this is day day two, video three. So we are, you know, I haven't actually done anything to it today. So apart from doing this bolt down here, I've got to jack it up and do this bolt. Um, the car is pretty much done in a day, in a day. Okay, I've got to get it. Um, I've got to clean the seats. Uh, I may be swapping the seats over from Loopy Harold. I've got to put the new number plates on. Uh, if I don't swap the seats over, I'll be cleaning these seats, but I'll be cleaning these anyway. But um, And what else have I got to do? Oh, new steering wheel. I showed you the steering wheel, didn't I? I think I've already shown you the steering wheel. There's none on eBay. I've emailed Club 500 to see if they've got any steering wheels. The only one on eBay, which is 25 quid, it's all, it's all peeling off up here. So that's no good to me. Um, it's not, it's not something that you could change, I don't think. Let me have a quick look. No, it's sort of welded in, I think. It's not something that you could... I'm not sure how it's... Um, shouldn't really take that off while I've got the battery connected. Um, yeah, so it's got, it's got to have a new steering wheel. Um, if I could... Shame it's not black, because I could get... There's loads of black ones. I've even got a black sport one, which I could have used, but it's not black, so... Um, ECU is gone. Uh, that's sent out, sent off this morning to the uh, fella down in Kent, so I'll probably get that back Monday. Um, so yeah, it's nice to nice to get the new windscreen in. So I'm gonna have a little swap around. I'm gonna move the cars out of the way so we can get the Puma back down here, and I'll get this one in behind it, um, and then I'll get it jacked up and get that bolt done there. So be just so we can get the uh, Ujimawala the uh, bumper in properly and then we just need to wait for the new bumpers to come and then we can get them down the paint shop so uh, and but as this one's on it we'll get it MOT'd with this one on um, hopefully the number plates will turn up tomorrow and we can get the new plates on so that's it for the time being we'll be back uh, we'll be back shortly so this is the battery out of um, the new car um, and it was dead as a door now I just went to uh, windscreen fella went and I went to uh, move the cars around to get the Puma back down the front of the driveway here and um, it would that 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 battery's dead it's saying half charge on me little cheap meter um, but I put it on on Monaco genius I put it on in repair mode um, to charge it up so if it if it needs to repair it will repair it and then it will charge it um, and I've put remember the Raptor battery that we uh, we tried before when we did the review of the Noco. If you want to see the review on the Noco, click on the link above and you can see it. Um, that Raptor battery, which was still showing half charged, even though it's been sitting, I don't know, month and a half, something like that, in the back of the garage. I put that in the car and the car's fired up. So this Noco did do the business on that battery. So it's on charge. It looks like quite an old battery, to be fair. It could even be the original battery. Doesn't seem to have any branding on it. Looks like the sticker's come off. Nothing on the back of it either. Um, we're going to clean it up before we put it back in as well. 
So we'll leave that on charge until the knocko's done its thing, and then we'll put it back in and try it again. Right, so I need to uh, get this bolt out. It's been a pain, this bolt. I need to get this out a little bit. How much we need to move it. Probably the only screw I need to take out, I think. Hopefully. Yeah, that'll do. Just need to have a look in there. Oh uh, yeah, I need to get something on the thread up there, hold it in place. I couldn't do this before. Get this out of the way. I don't want to take it right off. No need to take it right off. I don't think. Right, hopefully that gripped firmly on there. Might do it, might be enough. Let's see. Oh, no, <laughs> let go of it straight away. going on here. I forgot the wrong size. Right. Let's try again. I'm hoping it's not rounded off. I think I just had the incorrect size. Right. It's difficult this bumper in the way. Hmm. Doesn't want to turn. Oh, blimey. That is tight. That is really tight. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. It's not coming. I'm going to have to try my socket set and see if I can do it with that. We'll get a bit more leverage on it. I don't think it's going to work though. I think I'm going to have to even cut it off. So I had to, um, it just wouldn't go no matter what I did. So I ended up having to cut it off with an angle grinder and then I prized it out and bashed it back into shape. So when it comes to it, when I come to put this on, I'll have to do it with a nut and bolt. Unless I can, uh, I know you can get these things. So I might, I might actually get some. But at least that means now I can clip the bumper in properly. I think that bracket's broken at the end there, so it's not holding it in properly, but it'll, it'll do for now. It'll do. We'll have to put a new bracket on there. I didn't think it was actually, but I think it must be. I'm not going to pull it off again, I'm not going to bother. So that'll do. Um, right, let's push that back. I'm not going to do that up. Actually, no, I will for the time being. Because if I do take it for MOT, oops, MOT with this bumper on, which is quite lightly, then I'll have to um, I'll have to do it all up for that. So I might as well at least get this back on. That way, I don't need to take the wheel off again. To do this bit up. That's it. I could plug the uh, lights in, but I'm not going to bother doing that just just yet. Okay, that's that. I've got the I'll get the wheel back on in a minute. But while we're here, let's have a look at the brake pads. There's my torch gone. Lost my torch. Looking in there, they look virtually brand new. There's no lip whatsoever on there. Yeah, those pads are brand new virtually. That's good, that's something I won't need to do. That looks like it's been done at some point. 
So yeah, something's been done with this. No, that's good, I'm pleased with that. It's um, something else I haven't got to do on this car. It's not all a rust bucket down here like some of the other cars have been. It has definitely been looked after this car, definitely. Right, for the time being, let's get the wheel back on and that's that done. So this is the fellow we used today for the new windscreen. Paul Howes, found him on a local Facebook group. And he's uh, done this new windscreen, made a cracking job, as you'd expect. Good price, only five pounds cheaper than the uh, previous bloke, but he's more local. And uh, he came and did it the next day. And as I said earlier, he even uh, could have come the same day. So uh, that's a better service than I was getting before. So yeah, cracking job. That's the other side of his card. So it does windscreen, body glass, remove and refit, sunroof repair and replacement, windscreen repairs, heated rear windows, fitting only, glass reseals. And that's uh, windscreendirect.co.uk. So uh, I'll, I'll be putting a link to his website uh, in the comments, not in the comments, in the description below. Um, just in case you're uh, around the South London, Northwest Kent area, I'm sure he goes further afield as well. But uh, yeah, recommend him. I'll be using him on the other car as well, uh, probably next week. Uh, so yeah, great job. So the steering wheels have come, as you can see, steering wheels as in plural. So I bought this one, this one was 20 quid. It's up for 25 quid or near offer. Obviously this one's got an airbag with it. So the airbag on its own is worth more than 20 quid. So I offered 20 quid and it was accepted. As you can see, the steering wheel was in a really, really poor state. It's obviously had a security um, lock on there, which has destroyed the paintwork or destroyed the leather, plastic, whatever it is on these steering wheels. Um, but I got it for 20 quid. So I thought to myself, this is this is this will do. At least I can get the airbag on. This will do to get it through the MOT. Uh, and then the following day, this one came up. I can't remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't that much. Um, but this is in good condition. Doesn't include the airbag, of course, but um, yeah, this one, I'm gonna keep this one because um, I've got the airbag and of course the buttons on their own are worth 20 quid. So I've got a free airbag and a duff steering wheel, but I will keep it, I won't throw it away because it might be something I can use in future. Again, maybe just to get a car through an MOT, so not a waste of money. As you can see there, we've got the number plates. And uh, that also came back yesterday as well, the ECU from Electronic Services. Um, due to my surgery and uh, unexpectedly being in hospital for two days, obviously I can't get anything done at the moment. So there will be a slight delay in the next video. So we will upload these videos for the weekend as most of what it, uh, what you're seeing now is, um, or what you've already seen, I should say, has already been recorded. So um, future recordings, there'll be a bit of a delay because uh, Obviously, I'm recuperating from my uh, surprise operation a couple of days ago. Um, so that's it for now. But um, we'll, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll just... Um, well, I probably will put the steering wheel on because that's not any effort to do that. So we'll put that on and then at least we'll know that that's... Sorry, not that one. We'll put that one on. And uh, at least that part will be done anyway. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Well, I've, so I've got the steering wheel, as you know. Um, so I'm just going to take this airbag off and um, put the steering wheel, put the new steering wheel back on. I haven't bothered to clean the new steering wheel. I'll do that once it's on. Um, don't forget, if you're messing with airbags, disconnect the earth battery strap before touching anything. <clears throat> so all I've got to do is uh, take the airbag off and do the... Um, prongs, not the prongs, what do you call them? The uh, electrical connections. Two electrical connections plus the other one just there. Take that off. Take the rubber bung off. 24mm socket. Oops, stick that on an extension bar. You really need to make sure that the. Um, if you're undoing this for the first time, Need to make sure that the steering lock's on. Otherwise it will just slip round. 
That's that. And it's, although you can't really put this on the wrong way because it's uh, you know off off of centre because it's on a spline, um, it only goes on one way and there's a little mark in the inside of the steering wheel and it lines up with a little mark on the thread. But just for peace of mind, what I like to do is just to get it straight and it's just easy to get it off in the first place. So then we need to undo that again and the steering wheel just lifts off. Obviously it was a bit tighter before for some reason when it came off. It's obviously never been off before, now it has, it's not too bad. So, so that's the duff one. So what we're going to do, I've got a sports steering wheel that I had to cut this piece off. So what I might do is I might take this piece off of here and put that on the sports steering wheel. Um, and I'm also going to take out the stereo things. Um, and probably sell those. I may I may just keep it as it is, I'm not really sure at the moment. So well, let me just quickly show you on here again, so you can see it properly. Yeah, it's the bottom one, see the bottom one here, hopefully you're seeing that, completely snapped. Now I don't recall me snapping that, and there was no bits lying around, so I don't know if it was already like that. It was probably done during the crash, I expect, so this one is, is all good. And uh, we'll thread all through the cables like so lining up just there push it into position like so get a bolt back on nut me and nuts and bolts. I don't know what it is about me and nuts and bolts. Tighten that up. Take the keys out again as well actually, so lock it. I'm not sure whether this is supposed to go on a... whether this is supposed to be uh, torqued or not, but I've never bothered torquing them in the past, I've just done it up tight. I think it's very highly unlikely that that's ever going to come off. Highly unlikely. Now what I should have done really is uh, as I had that steering wheel off I should have put the underneath bit back on. Um, ordinarily I would do because you can see the screw holes. Um, I'm not going to bother this time because one I haven't got the screwdriver here and um, two I can't be bothered at the moment. So right now what we need to do is connect that up. Now this is the bit that often gets in the way um, when you put it all back together, why is this not going on? Well, feeding it in the wrong way. When you put it all back together, oh, what the hell? That's it. Does help if you put it around the right way. Um, if you leave this, if you don't tuck these wires out of the way and push this one back into uh, its little place where it sits that's when your wires end up getting in the way and activating your horn. So as soon as you plug the battery in, your bloody horn starts going, which is really infuriating. So, we should now be able to plug this in. Let's come out again, look. So once I put these in, I'll, um, I'll push it back in again. So purple into purple, obviously. And orange into orange, obviously. Push that thing back into position again. That doesn't float around in there. So there shouldn't be any wires in the way now. Famous last words, I know. Get them all poked out of the way. Let's come out again. Always does it, this thing. I don't understand why. You can never, once they've come out, they never seem to want to go back in again. I think this wire is a bit, a bit short, that's the problem. Never see, oh, that seems a bit more secure right let's try it push it on that should be it that's better now that doesn't feel as if there's too much resistance there so hopefully I'll plug the uh, battery back in and the hall won't sound that's better that's much better okay good right let's um let's plug that in and hope for the best
Right, hopefully when I put this earth back on, the ho hooter won't go off. No, that's good. Right, close that down. And then we'll go around. The reason the car is here is because I've got a bag of gravel just there. <laughs> so I've got the car blocked in at the moment. Right, that's on, so hopefully... Yeah, that's it. Horn works fine. Okay, that's it. That's it. Done. Steering wheel's on. Uh, what else we got to do? So that was a quick job. Only took five minutes to do that, thankfully. Um, so yeah, now I've got a duff steering wheel, so I'm going to chuck that in the garage and we'll take that apart some other time. Um, so left to do, I've got to put the, the bottom cowling back on, obviously. Um, got the screws down here. Um, what else? Seat belts. Got to do the seat belts. Um, that will come on the next video. And um, what else? Clean the seats. Uh, I can't think. I can't think what we've got to do. Clean the seats. Do the seat belts. Oh, I've got I've got the uh, ECU back, so I'm not going to put that in yet until I've done the seat belts. So once I know all the sensors are back as they should be, then I'll put the ECU back in. And again, that will come on the next video. Um, and then hopefully that we're not going to have an issue with that um, knee airbag. Because with the knee airbag, the, the, the cables, on, cables on those knee airbags are really short. And I'm hoping that uh, if it is a problem, it's because the cables come out. I had, I had trouble bolting it in for some reason. I don't normally. Um, it's only held in by two Torx bolts, but I did have trouble doing that. Um, so whether something's happened there or not, if, if it's if it's duff and it's still coming up, um, I'll get another one. You literally pick them up for about 15 quid and try it. Um, if that don't work, then there's obviously something a bit more suspect. Well, let's hope not. But chances are I'll, I'll change the seatbelts and pre-tensioners. Plug in a multi ECU scan and the codes will clear. For some bizarre reason, they didn't clear last time when I did it before changing anything. Now, I can't remember. Alex said to me, oops, Alex said to me, Do you normally plug in MES before you've repaired them? And I, to be honest, I really can't remember. Um, I don't know. Or maybe I plug it in, but I don't try and clear it. That may be what I normally do. I haven't done one of these where I've changed the airbags for quite some time now. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So we'll, we'll yeah, we'll change seatbelts, uh, pre-tensioners, plug in the the new e or the reset ECU, uh, see what comes up. So we're going to call it a day on this video today. We've just all we've done is that steering wheel. Um, that's the end of this video. So uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, it really helps the analytics of the video and puts it out there to more people that are interested in Fiat 500s. So please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to. Uh, like share and subscribe uh, especially the subscribe we're heading towards that 3000 mark now still aiming for 5000 by the end of the year but really would like to get to 3000 now that's the next milestone so again thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you again on the next one